You know, Chairman, when we tell our health story, it is a long one. It will require many hours for you to even comprehend what we have gone through to where we are today. So Chairman, when I was elected as governor in 2013, first areas where I chose to visit was the Coast General Hospital. And I keep repeating this story, Mr. Chairman, so that it is properly understood. As I walked into that hospital, I found a notice clipped on, on the wall that was written in Kiswahili. And these are the words, Tafadhali enda tafuta matibabu kwengine hapa hakuna dawa. That moment, Mr. Chairman, I learned that it is not only the privileged, it is not only that those that are doing well deserve good quality medical care or health care. So we made a deliberate effort and specific decisions to see how best we'll be able to totally transform healthcare in Mombasa, and by and large, that extends to the other coastal regions. Mr. Chairman, like I said, that is a very long story. It will require many hours uh, for me to tell it. But now, when COVID came, when COVID-19 was announced, first of all, I was in America. And the first case in, in Miami happened, it was in Florida. So I quickly flew back home. And because of the infrastructure that we had already started to put in place, the human resource capacity, because in Mombasa, we negotiated and put on our payroll every senior consultant that resides in Mombasa. So it was very easy for us to quickly build a system or infrastructure that is responsive to the COVID challenges. That is why, Mr. Chairman, within the first week, we were able to come up with 19 uh, private bed facilities and eventually very quickly move to 300, then to 150. So as we speak, we have 450 uh, capacity for COVID patients. We have 12 ICU facility for COVID patients. And Mr. Chairman, you are a doctor. You know the success rate for severe care for COVID-19. We are at 10%. Those that have been put through ventilators, our success rate is at 10%. Globally, is roughly 2%. So we have men and women that have put their lives in the line to be able to work and save lives of many Kenyans. We do not discriminate. Whoever walks into our hospital is looked after. We don't ask you where you come from. When you cannot afford to pay the bill, we understand and we let you go. If I was to tell you I have met people from many counties that have been treated in the Coast General Hospital. So I am saying this to the committee for one reason. For me, this was as a result of devolution came to being in 2013 and were able to make so much difference in the lives of the people. Now, Mr. Chairman, why I always happily appear before your committee? Because I, I understand and appreciate that it's a rare opportunity that I'll be able to engage with so many senators, let alone being able to be responsive to the queries, but also share my experience and ask where I think we need support. So to be able to truly realize the dreams of devolution. Mr. Chairman, before this house, there is the formula, the third generation formula. 
and I have said, and I understand very well where my brother, Senator Jared K, comes from. Obviously, he supports a position because they are gaining, which we want every country to gain. I want to see counties gain. I want to see the evolution being progressive. It should not be retrogressive. You cannot be able, even when the times are harder, you cannot be able to announce at every end of fiscal year that you've done less projects than the year before. Mr. Chairman, Mombasa, last fiscal year, lost 1.2 billion. This new proposed formula, again, we're going to lose roughly 600 million. Cumulative, that is 1.8 billion. The experience we have had over the period, Mr. Chairman, even when you look at Nairobi, Nairobi being a city county, the national government has had to form this metropolitan arrangement and they are funded besides their located figure close to 28 billion because the dynamics of an urban setup are different from the rural setup. Mr. Chairman, nobody ever takes count of how many people, what we call working population, would walk into Mombasa every day to earn a livelihood and go back home to our neighboring counties. The level of services, we are in the hospitality industry. Mr. Chairman, if we do not improve on the basic infrastructure, you will never tell me, like the way my brother Senator has said he loves Mombasa, it will never be the same again. Even when you're looking at the special economic zone that is being discussed, as a county, we have a responsibility to ensure we put plans in place that will create adequate support infrastructure for the facilities. We have to make sure we build capacity of our people to be able to earn a decent living. So one very simple agenda, ours is to uplift the standards of lives within our people. Mr. Chairman, the danger is if we do not have resources, adequate resources, even to prepare our young people to be able to be ready for the jobs that will come, we will be creating a much bigger problem because some people from elsewhere will come and get the jobs while ours will not be able to do anything. It is not easy that someone would imagine the coastal region in totality six, seven years after the evolution is going to lose for the first time seven billion shillings. My humble appeal to the Senate and to this particular committee and even those that are gaining, Kenya is a republic. Some of us have sacrifice so much to be able to focus on building a united Kenya. If there is no equity, if there is no equality, every gain that you can talk about today shall go away, Mr. Chairman. So I appeal with humility. And I understand very well that some of us feel the gains we're already imagining. And I'm sure my brother Cherarke, for example, is looking to become governor. <laughs> so he's seeing the resources right there. <laughs> and he wants them to stay like that. I am a, a going governor. But what I want is the evolution to work, to be responsive to the challenges, you know, to be meaningful, to make a difference. We don't want a city county like Mombasa to be a conduit of, a, of human resource costs. For example, Mr. Chairman, we got 600 million disbursement last financial year, last, last month, 550 went to pay salaries. We are dependent on the revenue collection locally for development. We have had challenges, you know, SGR, COVID. We had, had started to progress really well. 
We moved from 1.2 billion collection, 2 billion, we had surpassed 3.5. But this year, I don't even think we're going to get to 3 billion. What does that mean for all of us? What are we going to be remembered for? Will the senators that are gaining be remembered nationally for only what they did for their counties? I don't think that should be the conversation. I think collectively, all of us must come together and have a meaningful discussion on how we can cushion everybody so that everyone, at the end of the day, can say they are part and parcel of this country and they're progressing. Mr. Chairman, I thank you for this opportunity. And I want to remind you, you had said earlier that uh, during our first op uh, kidney transplant, you shall be in the theater. Please uh, do come and invite some of your colleagues. We can be watching from, from uh, the outside of uh, the theater. So that even when you come to, to audit here, there's something that you have seen, uh, what do you call it? We honor nice. is Asante Chairman, and may God bless you, and may God protect you from COVID and all other diseases. Asante. Thank you, Governor.